Of course, the thing I didn't want the most was the first thing that came up, but okay. Hello, fiber friends. Welcome to the Jillian Eve channel. There's a lot of new fiber friends joining us lately. Welcome. I am so glad you're here. So I wanted to start off this video by saying that the number one request I have been seeing is that I'm using a whole bunch of vocabulary that people don't know what the what the words mean. I really want everyone to be able to access and enjoy the information that we have going on here. So I am going to invite a little sheep friend <laughs> to join us. And when I say spinning specific vocabulary words, our little sheep friend will pop up and help you to know what it is that I'm talking about. It'll be a little bit like Clippy. Remember Clippy? When you would be writing a letter and Clippy would pop up and say, it looks like you're trying to write a letter. I can help you with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm old. I'm showing my age right now, but uh, thumbs up if you know Clippy, if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, the days before Grammarly. All right, well, let's get started with today's video. What are we up to today? Hmm, well, I don't actually know. I didn't want a huge project. I just wanted to have some spinning fun. So I thought, let's get back to something that I used to do when I first started this channel. And I started this YouTube channel way back in 2018. And if you remember the olden days of YouTube, there used to be something that was very popular on a lot of channels. And that was the Wheel of Fortune. You can see my light. That's my studio light right there <laughs> in the reflection. <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune, or the Wheel of Mystery. And I thought this was hilarious because it's a wheel of mystery for a spinning wheel and there's just a lot of wheels involved and that just kind of tickled me and made me giggle. So <laughs> I got one of these way back in the 2018 times. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just dig around in my fiber stash, put something on each of these sections. We're going to spin it around a couple times. Let's say three times, maybe four times. I'm not sure yet. Three or four. We'll decide. And whatever pops up on here, I am going to put on the blending board and make some Rolex which I will then spin. And by the end of this video, we are gonna have some fun, just maybe, maybe not, maybe it'll be very boring or maybe it will be hideous, I don't know. But I hope at least the journey will be fun. I hope at the end of this video, we can say 10 out of 10 would ride again, but whether the yarn's gonna be great or not, I don't know, I guess we'll find out. So that's what we're up to today. Do the YouTube things, like, subscribe, comment, and let me know what kinds of fibers would you like to see on the future Wheel of Mystery if we ever do this again. I want it to be a little random. So I grabbed an armful, I scooped an armful of stuff from my stash and it's all here on the chair. <sighs> just looking like a mess. So I'm just gonna grab things out of there and we'll put it on the wheel and whatever we get is what we get. And then we'll spin it up and see what happens. So buckle up, cause this could be a ride. I'm just gonna go real quick and write whatever it is on the wheel. And I came up with a plan. Hopefully this works. I'm gonna spin it four times because I think that's exciting. That gives us more of a possibility of getting something really weird that we have to deal with. And if one of those spins is something that gets added later, like it's something that doesn't go on the blending board. For example, I have some beads, like seed beads, and I also have some Cookie Monster eyelash yarn that we could ply whatever with. So if, if something like this turns up, we'll give it an extra spin because this would come later in the process and won't go on the blending board. So I hope I'm not overdoing it because there's a point where, you know, you can mix it so much that you just end up with mud. I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. So we'll start with beads and Cookie Monster yarn. We'll put the Cookie Monster yarn on the blue. C is for cookie, and then we have some beads. Sparkles. We have 
I'm not sure what this is, but I think I'm going to call it Tiger's Eye. We have some pink. CT is for combed top. Mm. Mohair. That's from a goat, not a sheep. This is the bamboo that came in a recent Paradise Fibers box. I have some other sparkles, sparkles. If I spin up sparkles, I'll just close my eyes and grab a random color. Um, we have wool neps, green locks. This is yak down. Yak. Ooh, alpaca, mill ends. This is some Malabrigo Nube, so that would be, I believe, Merino. Okay, there it is. We have a bunch of random stuff on this wheel, and now we can, see it's not very balanced. When it stops spinning and starts to go backwards, I'll grab it. Whatever section it's on before it goes backwards, that'll be the one we read, and hopefully that'll kind of counteract the unbalancedness of it. It wasn't very expensive, <laughs> but it's fun. So let's go ahead and spin. We're going to give four spins and I'm not going to cut here um, because I don't want it to look like I'm picking and choosing. I'm just going to spin it four times and grab whatever it is. So here we go. Number one. I might speed it up though. <laughs> wool naps. Okay. We have some wool naps. That's that's our first thing. All right. I already We'll see. Okay. Number 2. green locks. Okay. So the wool nuts are green and the green locks are green. So, so, so that's, that's not bad color wise, but working with these wool nuts, I've kind of been like, ah. <laughs> of course the thing I didn't want the most was the first thing that came up, but okay. Two more. Alpaca. I feel like this isn't terrible. I feel like this could make a good yarn. It'll definitely be textured, but it's not terrible. So hopefully number four is something good. Like, I think bamboo would be the worst. I hope we get sparkles. That would be the best. <laughs> sparkles. Come on, sparkles. Come on, sparkles. Stop. Oh, oh, this is because it's unbalanced. Nube. Okay. Well, I mean, it's unbalanced, but it's always unbalanced. So we'll just go with it. <laughs> we have this Malabrigo Nube. So this is interesting. This is nothing that I would have put together by myself. So that's where I think <laughs> the Wheel of Mystery is a cool idea because it gives us a chance to get outside of our natural instinct of what we want to work with and what we think will work together and it can challenge us to push our boundaries and try something new and weird like these wool nips that I probably would not have used if they didn't come up because I just... Alright, let's get to the blending board and see what happens. <laughs> Was this even a good idea? I don't know if this is a good idea. <laughs> this is the blending board that I made. I have a video if you want to make your own blending board. And I did make one addition. I got some uh, little no slip feet that are screwed into the bottom. They feel very rubbery. And so um, I can work on the table and it doesn't skid. I think I'll start with some of this alpaca maybe stripes, kind of. We'll just tuck that down in there. I mean, there's a lot of alpaca. Maybe we should do some more. I'll just kind of, yeah. We'll 
just do some more. Maybe a little bit of this Nube. I think a blending board is a good place to put the Nube uh, because it is kettle dyed and sometimes it comes out a little bit felted and difficult to draft. So if you want to spin with the Nube, um, kind of opening it up like I just did, pulling it apart and putting it onto a blending board can be a good way to kind of perk it up and make it a little easier to draft from. The neps are just gonna be where they go. They're in there. And then we will add some locks. <laughs> there we go. Get it tucked down in there. And then we'll do it all again. You can tell I'm blending boarding from the sound on the phone. It, the, um, the, the, the tines on the um, cloth, the, what's the cloth called now? The um, carding cloth? Yeah, the carding cloth have a very distinct noise. And when you're running a drum carter device, the sound is consistent and it has a certain kind of rhythm to it. I, lo I love that you know these things. The fact that you know these things means that you know me and I love you for that. <laughs> uh, wait, hold on, it gets better. And then if you're using uh, hand cards, it, it has a similar sounding cadence to a drum carter, but it's it's only for a short swoop. A short swoop? Um, yeah, because it's, it's two. Well, because right, you just, you do it, well, you keep redoing it, but it's not constant. That's accurate. You know what else I'm doing? You know what else I'm doing right now? What? Recording. Right now? Yeah, I recorded you just now. So, yes, I, I have listened well. You know that your blending board is full and ready to have the roll legs taken off when it starts to be taller than the tines or the teeth and you can't pack it down anymore. You brush it and pack it in there and it is still sticking above the tines. So this is fully loaded and ready to have the roll eggs taken off. So I'm going to, you know, I was thinking I could spin this like a bat. I could take the whole thing off and just have it as one textured bat. Um, but I think for this one, I'm going to do roll eggs just because I want to. So yeah. This one ended up with too much floof to stay together very well, so I'm just kind of undoing and re-scraping it over the teeth, and that'll help it hold together, but it only needs to hold enough to get it to the spinning wheel, so it'll be okay. <laughs> two roll eggs and one that was supposed to be two that ended up as one giant one, but we're ready to spin. I don't know about you, but I'm getting big. Loki vibes <laughs> from these Rolex. And once um, once I stood back and looked at them, I was like, wow, that's like Loki vibes to me. Um, then I started to really dig these. 
even with those wool naps. They just sort of hang on. But I know that as they go, they may <laughs> or may not <laughs> fall out as we go. Um, and that's just kind of what they do. But enough of them will hang in there that there will be some texture from them. And I'm going to use my Ashford e-spinner to spin this because it has a bulky bobbin. So it has um, some extra room on the bobbin. And I think I'd like to do this sort of just a fun textured chunky yarn with the locks in here being still mostly in lock form. Um, and, the, and the naps. I think this will look really cool just as a textured yarn. Will I ply it? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I I guess we'll determine that kind of as I go. I want to see how the yarn is looking um, in the first place. Maybe I'll chain ply it. I don't know. But let's get spinning and see what happens. These wool naps, I feel like I should call them popcorn, like wool popcorn <laughs> instead of full naps because they are flying everywhere. They're all over the floor. They would catch the twist and they'd go ping, <laughs> ping <laughs> all over the place. They're everywhere. Look at this. I'm covered. I'm covered. My whole apron is just covered. <laughs> Can you see all these? <laughs> And they're all over the floor, too. They're everywhere. <laughs> so it's at least been very entertaining. A few of them hung in there. <laughs> so there is some funny texture in this yarn um, that I'm forever going to think of these things just like popping and pinging all over the place. <laughs> boo, boo. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to finish the other two Rolex and we'll see how this yarn turns out in just a moment. And I have, I have wool nips in my hair <laughs> because they're just flying everywhere. It's been very exciting. Here is what it looks like on the bobbin and here is my plyback test. I like the plyback very, very much. So I think that what I should do with this is to ply it from a center pole ball. I know that I have a video out there that says, watch out when you center pole ball ply because it will affect your twist. And it does, but that doesn't mean that we never ply from a center pole ball because after I made that video and then I did some another video later and, and people were commenting and they were like, I'm so glad you decided to center pole ball ply again. And I'm like, I never said don't. <laughs> I just said, no, what happens to your yarn if you do? Because, you know, you, you might need to know. <laughs> Are you ready to see this finished yarn? Here it is. I really, really, really like the texture of these green locks. I think that's really, really cool looking. And the way that the Malabrigo Nube came out and kind of candy striped with the alpaca, I think that looks really pretty. Um, <laughs> but those <laughs> wool naps, are kind of a disaster um and and they look a little bit like pills it looks like the yarn is pilling 
And I, I think probably that's because there's also those green locks in there and it looks like, you know, the yarn it has green, so then there's green neps, so it looks like it's just pilling out, but I don't know. The neps are not my favorite. However, I'm glad I did a project with them to figure out what they're about. <laughs> And what it's like to spin with them. They're like glitter. They're like wool glitter. <laughs> They're everywhere. So I think that this is a Loki variant. In the form of yarn. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. So 10 out of 10, I would ride this ride again, even with the wool naps, even with the wool naps. I would, I would, you know, experiment again, I guess you could say. So let me know what you think and I will see you in the next one. Happy spinning.